This video is sponsored by Juapet. So if you didn't know, Tesla and other EV cars are all battery and no engine. And just like our iPhones, when you use the battery, you have to charge it. And over time, the battery does degrade so it doesn't hold a good enough charge like it used to. With iPhones, at least, you can help avoid this by optimizing battery charging so the phone will charge up to 80% until it thinks you need it. And when it gets close, charge it to 100%. And Tesla's in that aspect is very similar. You don't want to charge the car to 100% every day and leave it there as this can further degrade the battery. You also want to avoid putting a ton of high voltage current into the battery and supercharging your car all the time. This kind of sucks because the estimated range on the Tesla website is for a full charge. And when you charge your car to only 70 or 80%, you're not getting the full mileage listed. Now, this part is very mixed, but you want to charge your car daily anywhere from 70 to 90%. Some people who are really afraid of battery degradation charge it to 70%, while others who are also afraid don't charge it past 90%. For me personally, I like sticking in between daily charging from 80 to 85%. I don't charge to 70% because it's not enough miles for daily driving or any emergencies. And I also don't charge to 90% because we live in SoCal and the garage gets pretty hot it actually increases your range. So a lot of times after I charge to 90%, when I come back later, it will become 93 or 94%, which is a little too high for my liking, even for Tesla as it limits your regenerative braking at this level. So for me, 80 to 85% is perfect, but again, do what works for you. Now, before we get started on battery calibration, let's quickly talk about the type of batteries Tesla has. And there's only three of them and it also matters how you charge it. There's the OG battery that's currently in all long range vehicles, the 2170 batteries. With these, you'll see a daily and trip tab where your battery is on your screen. And the rules apply here to charge to 80 to 90% for daily driving. In the standard range Model 3s, they are using their LFP batteries, which are different than all the other batteries they have. This is a battery with decreased range, decreased high charging capacity, as well as decreased power. However, the benefit with these LFP batteries is that you can charge it to 100%, which means you can get the full miles listed on the Tesla website every day. On the battery screen, you'll know you have the LFP batteries because you'll see zero to 100%. And Tesla actually recommends charging your car to 100% every day as much as you want. And lastly, we have the new and hot Tesla made batteries, which is the 4680 cells. And these bad boys are huge. Now, these batteries are made currently in Austin, Texas, and are currently in some of the standard range Tesla Model Ys. However, it does have a decreased range of only 279 miles. They did this to cater to people at a better price point and will eventually put these 4680 cells in their long range versions. With these, you still want to apply the same charging habits with the 2170 cells where you don't charge to 100% all the time. So now that you know the type of batteries the Tesla offers as well as the charging habits, let's talk about how to recalibrate the battery. Now aside from normal battery degradation, Tesla states their battery packs use about 10% of degradation after 200,000 miles which is really good. Now, if you take my Model Y with an estimated range of 330 miles. Okay, we're at 100%, charging is complete. That is giving me 321 miles. So again, it always changes. Last time I was at like 100%, it was 325. However, now it's down to 321, which is only a 2% loss after 30,000 miles. However, now with my refurbished battery, I'm only getting 360 miles, which means I probably need to recalibrate the battery. I did do a video on the whole dead battery saga, so make sure you guys check that out. So you usually wanna do a recalibration when you're seeing a decrease of predicted range than what you had before. Now, it's not something you need to worry about for the most part, but sometimes people charge their cars and drain their cars to the same percentage every day. This confuses the system and it can't get an accurate range estimate. Now, after doing this, I've seen people gain 10 to 50 miles of range back. I saw in the Tesla Motors Club forum, a member posted his tips and it's a great post. Pretty much there's a BMS system that calculates the battery's voltage and capacity and translates it to range. However, if you don't allow the car to go through various range percentages and go to sleep for at least three hours, it won't be able to calculate an accurate rating. One way to help this is to always allow the car to go to sleep, whether at home or at work. I talk about this a ton in another video, but turning off sentry mode as well as cabin overheat protection usually does the trick. Another thing is you want to allow the car to go to sleep at different levels of state of charge. So if you drive a little every day and have plenty of miles left, you don't need to charge and plug it in every day. So for instance, in a week, your car can go to sleep at 
60%, 50%, and even down to 20%. Now again, you don't need to do this every day, but if you are noticing a decrease in range, definitely do it. Then charge it back up to 95%, let it go to sleep, and you should be good to go. Using the scheduled charge helps a lot here when you're doing this. And remember, even if your car is plugged in, it can still go to sleep as long as those settings I mentioned before are off. Now, I'm actually in the middle of doing this myself with my new refurbished battery to see if it gives me a more accurate reading. The Tesla tech told me it takes about three weeks to do a battery recalibration. But honestly, I think it's just driving with various levels of charge that actually does the trick. Okay, so one thing with the reconditioned battery I want to see is how accurate the range is. I mean, with my Model S loaner, I would barely drive maybe like a quarter of a mile and instead I would lose a mile. So right now I'm at 10%, which is equivalent to 31 miles here. And it's four miles to the gym, so we'll see if it's going to be four miles. So 31 minus four, 31 minus four, 31 minus four, 27. Gotcha. Now, when you have a reconditioned battery, you want to be safe, right? If you ever get a battery replacement done, or if you ever get a, a high voltage warranty service, like what I did, I want to make sure that the battery can be at its lowest charge and then charge up to hundred percent without any issues. And you also want to make sure you try charging it with the home charger as well as a supercharger because you want to see if the battery can handle the low power output from a home charger and the super high power output from the supercharger. And again, try preconditioning the battery. But first, let's go to the gym and see if we get to the gym with 27 miles. One last thing to note, when you are at this low state of charge, a lot of things don't work like sentry mode as well as dog mode. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I made it to the gym. Hopefully you can see me okay because it's a little dark outside. And of course, it is accurate, 27 miles on the dot. I had the trip tab open in the navigation as well. That one shows kind of a percentage. I've talked about this many times in other videos and it's much more accurate. And another reason why you need to recalibrate the battery so it gives a more accurate reading. But so far so good, just because it's a reconditioned battery doesn't mean the cells are more depleted or anything. Just finished the gym. I'm at 27 miles right now. I got a notification on my phone that said there's like insufficient charge, so make sure I charge right away. I'm going home. Again, it's four miles, so I should be arriving home in 23 miles. But overall, I don't recommend this. I mean, do it at home and then just charge at home. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to make sure the battery can hold a sufficient amount of charge with the supercharger. Also, we love to go on a ton of road trips, so it's a great idea to know how much range we have left in our battery. We went to Oregon recently and Simba and the dogs had a blast getting wet and having the time of their lives. However, we didn't have a way of drying our dog well when we were at the hotel. And now our road trips won't be the same again thanks to the fluffy portable pet dryer. It's super portable and compact and can fit easily in your luggage or even a backpack. It comes with all these attachments and three different airflow settings. And on the strongest setting, it's strong enough to even shoot off the water off the dog's coat. There's a way to use hot air or cold air and it has this smart button which turns on the hot air for three seconds and turns it off for three seconds so it doesn't burn the dog's skin. It also really helps that the blow dryer isn't that loud so the dog doesn't get scared of it. And a plus side is that it releases negative ions to prevent any static electricity buildup on the dog's coat. It starts at only $85.99 and I'll make sure to link it in the description below. And if you use my promo code CHRIS1515, you'll get 15% off. Huh. I wonder if that's why they put CHRIS1515. Maybe I should ask him for CHRIS3030. Anyways guys, back to the video. Well, we're gonna go ahead and go to the supercharger and then I'll let you know what happens. 20 miles. Made it with 14 miles, 5%. Okay, so I do wanna point out that on the Tesla website, if you charge your car at a 250 kilowatt station, if your state of charge is low enough, you should get 200 miles in 15 minutes. 14 miles, so we'll see if it gets in 15 minutes, 214 miles go 100 kilowatts that's it that's not good i am at a 250 kilowatt station ramping up ramping up come on 250 give me 250 so i'm already at nine percent so i just plugged in i set a timer for 15 minutes so we'll see how much miles i get in that span uh it started off a little bit slow at 100 so i was a little worried that maybe the reconditioned battery wasn't going to supply enough power or be good enough there are a lot of tests here so i am splitting the power a little bit However, it is ramping up finally. So right now I'm charging at 227 kilowatts. So not at 250 per se. It would be nice if I was at 250. 
Now, one thing I wanted to point out with the V3 250 kilowatt supercharger, according to Tesla and their website, there is no shared power anymore because of the way that they design the V3 superchargers. However, personally, myself, as well as others on the forum have found that when someone is sharing a supercharger right next to you, it does decrease the current. And then when they leave, it increases again. So I don't know why it does that. However, it is something to note. And again, I get so many questions on this. Is it bad to charge your Tesla at a supercharger all the time? Now, these batteries are pretty rugged. They're robust. They are designed to withstand that type of power output. However, think of it this way. It's not a good idea for anything to get a ton of current and power at once and to heat up really quickly. Again, I don't see any long-term issues with supercharging at a supercharger. My friend personally supercharged at a supercharger three or four times a week for an entire year, and he hasn't seen any excessive battery degradation. So I'm charging the car and I felt the pop underneath my seat. Hopefully it's not a bad thing, but I felt it where my feet were. I felt like a small pop. I'm still charging at 218 kilowatts. Right now I have 25% or 78 miles, nine minutes and 52 seconds. So it's been about five minutes and I already put on like 70 something miles, which is pretty good. So we'll see another, another nine minutes or so. And we're gonna see how much I can get if I'm gonna get close to that 200. But the goal here is to charge to 100% and I'm in, see it popped again, do you hear that? So just a quick Google search. They said the popping sound is completely normal. I assumed it was normal because you're heating up the batteries real fast. And my battery wasn't at the perfect preconditioned temperature. I mean, the supercharger that I live is only like 20, 10 minutes away and it was preconditioned the whole time. So it may not have been able to precondition the entire thing yet. But overall they said it's not an issue and it's not a bad thing when you do hear an occasional popping sound when you are charging at a supercharger. Okay, so just a quick recap. I started at 5% charge. It's been 15 minutes. I'm at 179 miles or 57%. So I get about 52% in 15 minutes, which isn't bad. 181 miles, but I'm not at the 214 miles that Tesla says that you'll get. You'll get 200 miles in 15 minutes with the 250 kilowatt supercharger. Definitely a popular supercharger. There's always people at this one. Just hit 80%. 80% is giving us 252 miles. So it's still charging. Just for the heck of it, I messaged the service guy uh, and he told me that it takes about three weeks for the Tesla battery to reconfigure and kind of level out and give you a more estimated range. I think it's because it's new and it's reconditioned. It's giving me just the typical 316 mile range, which is like supposed to be the uh, EPA range estimate. There's people waiting already. It's full, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Elon needs more superchargers in Irvine because the two off of the five in Irvine are always full and we need another one. There's one in Tustin, but that one is always full too. Look at it, there's already three cars, three Teslas waiting. And we have all these people here, all these Teslas here charging as well. So this car was waiting maybe five minutes and the car just came out. This car, gray car, Model Y just got here. We'll see how long he has to wait. It's been maybe two or three minutes since he's been here. But it's such a quick turnaround time. And in the app it even shows you, or I'm sorry, on the screen it shows you short weight, long weight, medium weight, short weight there. See, another car just left and so that Model Y only had to wait like two or three minutes. Okay, so here's another one coming right now. Let's see how long. Right now it is 9.11. So we'll see how long it takes for this Model 3 to charge. Oh, looks like someone just pulled out. So technically he can charge. So he only had to wait less than a minute. It's still 9.11. And now with the new software update, if there is a medium to long wait, the test and navigation will redirect you to another supercharger nearby. So I think one of the stalls isn't working because this Model S tried charging at this one. However, he left. So I don't know what's wrong. And again, it does show that any of them are broken on the app. However, the other day, one of these superchargers was broken and it didn't show on the app either. So it does happen. How come no one wants to charge next to me? Like there were three cars that could charge right here. It's like a nice open space. Yet everyone wants to charge on this lane here. I just washed my car, it looks sexy. So I have no idea why no one wants to charge next to me. So that one is broken, this guy's able to charge fine. 
So usually when it's broken, someone will always put the plug out so they know. So there's certain like, there's a communication, there's a code us Tesla owners do. First off, always wave at another Tesla owner. I know it's super awkward, but when you see them, just say, hey, nice car, looking good. And when the Tesla charger is broken, remove it from the plug and put it on top of the charger or just, I think top of the charger is the best. And lastly, there's tons of spots available. Do not park right next to someone because you're probably gonna be sharing the same circuit and you're gonna be reducing the charge power for both of you guys. But if it's busy, of course, there's nothing you can do. Look at that, 98%, I'm hit, only hitting 16 kilowatt, 311 miles. Uh-oh, she doesn't know. She doesn't know it's broken, she doesn't know the code. Actually, I wouldn't know either. It doesn't even say it's out of order, so. Uh oh let's see if she could charge. This is the ultimate test. Oh, she needs to come further back, there we go. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Lady! Okay, I'm gonna try and not get her face. Privacy issues, know what I'm saying? Let's see it. Is she gonna get out? Does she even know she's charging? Is the guy next to him gonna say anything? <sighs> this is intense stuff. This is what happens when you're a supercharger. And this guy went the wrong way, this ding-a-ling. Anyways. So, one of the guys was at a supercharger didn't work for him, an older Model S, the one like the loaner that I had. So he waited and he got another supercharger. He took out the supercharger plug so the people know it's broken. Now this Model Y is supercharging there. I can't see her Tesla logo to see if it's blinking green. However, she doesn't, I don't know if she realizes it's not supercharging or it is supercharging because she's not saying anything. She's talking on the phone. This is, what I, this is what you do when you're supercharging. I mean, I have my laptop here, I could do work, but, and I need to go to the bathroom because I drink way too much water at the gym. But, yeah, it's good stuff. Oh, charging complete. 316 miles, like they said. It is charging, where is this charging? Because I'm at 100%, I don't get any regenerative braking in the motor. So you can see I'm slowing down and I'm just slowing down like a normal car. But as far as that last person, it was charging the Model Y. So I don't know if the guy's uh, Model S was defected or something was wrong with it, but hers was charging, it was blinking green. So I guess even though the plug doesn't seem to be working, you should still try charging it unless it actually says out of order on the screen. But like I said before, recalibration takes a couple of times. I've only done it twice and I did gain two miles. So it used to be 316, now I'm at 318. So it's best to do on road trips because you can kind of drain the battery down. So it's been about four weeks since I got the reconditioned battery. Since that time, which was the Zion Narrows trip, when I did charge to 100%, I was getting 318 miles at 100%, which again, isn't the best because I was getting 316 miles when I first got the reconditioned battery. And right now it looks like nothing has changed. This is gonna be around the fourth battery reconditioned. So I'm not gonna probably do this again for a while now. And at 100%, I'm getting 318 miles. Again, it all depends on your driving habits, so don't worry too much. However, this is definitely a good thing to do if, like I said before, you charge your car at the same percentages every single day. It's a good idea to recalibrate the battery maybe every few months or so. Maybe I just need to drive the car more, but time will tell. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you guys next time.